All right, Ken Spriggs here with part eight of my Bandai 1-144 Millennium Falcon uh, build, as well as uh, other kits, uh, TIE Fighters, and at Walker, as I showed in my previous video. So now that I got the lights completed, uh, I'm going to begin the uh, some more of the weathering here shortly, but I'm going to start working on the diorama. I have a lot of great ideas, as I said. So let me show you the supplies I have here, and, um, and then we'll... Uh, We'll begin working on that and I'll show you how I'm going to get that going. Thanks. All right, so here are some of the supplies I'm going to use to build my uh, Jakku Desert Diorama for the Millennium Falcon. Uh, and uh, it's going to be chased by the two um, First Order TIE Fighters that are in the same scale once I get those built and painted. And as I showed in a previous video, I'm going to have a uh, crashed and rusted out and at Walker that uh, used to be uh, Ray's home before she escaped in the Millennium Falcon. So um, what I'm going to do is the bottom of it is going to be just a piece of foam board. I may or may not put some wood underneath that. We'll see. But I'm going to cut that into shape and then I'm going to use um, some styrofoam. I believe that's about an inch thick maybe a little bit thicker um, to, to make the desert texture as well and um, I'm gonna go with sort of a kind of a square but here's kind of an initial look for it I'm gonna give some rough edges to it so it it gives it a little more character um, and uh, and then I'm gonna put uh, waves in it and peaks like the sand in the desert um, and then I'm gonna use some different materials to create the desert look. Uh, primarily these uh, materials you can get at Hobby Lobby pretty reasonably priced uh, and they come in different different types of materials like here's the sand and I have a couple of those and then I have uh, some bigger uh, gravel which I can distribute around in some spots and I also have some larger rocks that can be glued in as well. These are all materials that can be glued down with, um, with some scenic cement. It's a very thin glue that you spray on and, and pretty much soak it into it in about a day or so. It, it, it adheres it very well onto the material. Um, then I'm going to be using uh, some weathering materials like this to me a weathering master that has some sand light sand and mud that I can use um, I'm gonna be creating some rocks for it some bigger rocks from a little rock mold uh, if you saw my snow speeder uh, build uh, I showed you the rocks in there I used that for it I made some resin rocks so I'll be doing that for this as well some bigger rocks and then I also got some uh, little more um, uh, powdery material weathering powder it's a medium rust and this is from another company got from a local hobby shop so same thing it's some some really red rusted powder and mostly that will be used for the the edit walker once I get that painted uh, with some black coat black basing and some some of the um, the gray that it's supposed to be it's going to be heavily rusted heavily weathered and I'll also be using some other Tamir weathering masters as well with some light rust, dark rust, some oils, things like that. So um, the Millennium Falcon is going to be pretty much in this particular position. I'm not going to have this base, of course, but I am going to repurpose the stem that goes into it and have that secured firmly into the into the base so I can remove it and put it back on. But I want to have it in that position so I can see the top of it mainly and then I can also see the bottom if I want to because I do have those uh, those cool landing lights that I want to put on there so that's kind of the position it's going to be in it'll be in flight 
and the TIE fighters chasing it. And then the uh, ADAT collapsed in the background, rested out uh, with some rocks around it and bits of metal that had been pulled away from it and that sort of thing. So, okay, so these are the general materials that I'm going to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get the general shape of the foam board and the styrofoam and then we'll go from there. Okay. All right, so here is the uh, general shape that I made as I showed you. It's sort of a, actually a rectangle, but I, I did some rough edges around it to give it a little more character. Um, so let me go ahead and get the uh, styrofoam onto there, an initial base of that, and then we'll start sanding some detail into it and adding some extra ridges. All right. All right, so after I got the board formed, I took the styrofoam and I had to use two different pieces uh, because it wasn't wide enough. Um, and, um, and I matched them up along the edges. It's fairly rough still, as you can see, but that's not a problem. Uh, the styrofoam sands down pretty smooth with some sandpaper, so I really like it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do next is get these two pieces initially glued down onto the foam board with some of this felt and foam tacky glue. This works pretty good and uh, doesn't melt the foam which is the important part um, and that's what it's designed to do. So once I get these on there I'll start contouring the edges and sanding them down and getting some more detail. And then I have a lot of extra pieces as you can see which I'll use to um, add on additional layers or ridges of sand and that sort of thing and glue those on and sand them down as well. So we get the, the contour that we want, the contour that I want, sorry. So let me get this glued on and then we'll be ready to go on to some more of the uh, sculpting. All right, so um, while that base is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and begin a little bit of the weathering and um, on this particular part of it, I'm going to use some uh, oils, uh, specifically from uh, Abtalung 502. And I've, I've seen a lot about these on YouTube and different videos, and everybody says how excellent they are. And I think they're right. I have used them a little bit, and I think they're great. Um, the colors that I got, I'm going to focus on that. <laughs> I got five of them uh, and the main ones I wanted were Starship Filth which is kind of a dark uh, a dark grimy look and um, Engine Grease and Engine Grease is really cool I'll show you here in a minute it really does look like grease uh, so it's a great thing to put on to the, the various um, exposed parts there like in here to get some grease on them that sort of thing uh, and then likewise I got um, some rusts so I got a light rust and a dark rust so I could uh, use some of those as well for some rust effects and then uh, in case I wanted to lighten any of these up I got uh, this dust color which is an off-white so I can use that to um, to lighten these up if I want to if they're too dark so uh, a little bit of a little plastic palette I have some uh, mineral spirits there uh, you can use terpenoid with this or I got uh, odorless mineral spirits which is uh, a similar thing a little bottle of that and they it's odorless so it's nice but it thins out the oil paints um, now the only tricky thing about the oil paints is that they do take quite a bit of time to dry depending on how you apply them so I'm going to do a couple of applications and I'm going to start with some small areas and see how it works and then go from there. Um, and uh, the two ways I want to kind of use it are uh, as a wash. So I'll thin it down really, really thin and then get a wash into the little intricate detail here to, to make that look what it's supposed to be. Um, the second way is to uh, thin it just a little and keep 
large dabs and you dab it along on here you first wash a section down like this whole area here for example you wash it down with some some of the mineral spirits so it doesn't just stick right onto the paint and then you dab some of it on and then use another brush to uh, brush it down and make some streaks on it so I'm going to use two different brushes I have a, a little a, a small one here for adding it in and a really big one to, to wipe down um, and uh, if need be I also have a larger thicker brush so I can do the same so once you put it on you can just brush down and get some streaks from it and that's kind of the idea so I'll be streaking down streaking away in the areas where it would actually be streaking and, um, and getting those effects so I'm gonna go ahead and try a little bit of those and uh, let's see what I can come up with all right all right so I um, I put a little bit of each so there's the starship filth the engine grease dark rust light rust um, I don't know if you can see it if it gets thinner look at the engine grease there you can see it looks like it is actually grease that looks pretty cool um, so it's gonna give that effect that I want of it being greasy streaks especially around the, um, the areas where there's machinery and it would be grease spewing out and streaking along the edges of the ship so I'm gonna go ahead and work on some of those and uh, see what I can come up with all right so the first thing I did was I picked this whole section here and I did the um, I just did the edge of this uh, section here as well since they're together and um, I wet it down with the uh, mineral spirits first and then I just took some of the starship filth and thinned it out quite a bit and just liberally coated it over so you can see it filled in those little edges I'm gonna let that dry here for a few minutes and then I'm gonna go ahead and use a, a flat brush as I showed to kind of wipe off most of it with the idea that I want the um, the little ridges the little detail inside to, to keep it and it'll stay in there and then we'll work on doing some actual um, streaks with it okay all right so uh, I let that dry a little bit and the nice thing about the really thin down uh, oils is that it dries a little quicker and then I just use this brush put a little bit of the uh, mineral spirits on it and just kind of lightly wiped off the top surfaces so you can see that a lot of the detail you can see it's still darkened and it's down inside of it and that's what I wanted to keep uh, and even a little bit like right in that little groove right there I left it a little thicker and at the top um, so that's gonna be pretty cool and that's the nice thing about the oils if you make a mistake you just put some more mineral spirits on it wipe it off but uh, it works really well for getting it down in those grooves you can already see there's already some streaking going on but I'm going to do a little bit more of that. Um, I want to do some different colors, so I'm going to use some of the grease and some of the, the rust, especially on the red sections. I'm going to use the rust to highlight that as well. Okay. All right, so um, I took some of the uh, light and dark rust, thinned it a bit, put it on top of that red panel to give it some different contrast. And as you can see, uh, in different places, I, uh, I just put some little smudges of... Um, some engine grease, some more of the rust, some of the starship filth, especially around the little protruding uh, mechanisms and controls. So let that sit for a few minutes, and I'm going to take this brush and just kind of brush down to give it some streaking effect. So you're not going to see these big blobs. You're going to see just some streaks, mainly coming from these engine parts here, um, to give it that kind of a look. Um, and let me just see if I can do just a little bit here on camera and actually what I want to do is um, dip it in some of the thinner dab it off a bit so I get a nice wet brush there we go there we go so sort of like that so you can see just the, the streaks the hints of it and um, you're not going to see the big blobs, but it's going to give you that uh, the dirt and filth coming down from there. And it's all going to be coming down this panel from this direction. So let me do the rest of that, and we'll see how that looks. All right, so there we go. Not too bad. Um, 
I try to remove some of the thicker streaks and leave just uh, the main hints of them. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, and like I said, the nice thing about it is I can always use some more of the mineral spirits and remove more if, if I think it's too much, but that looks pretty good. It looks uh, pretty grimy and dirty and there's some streaks on it um, on that red panel, which is actually one of the stickers. I've used the stickers on here. I wanted to make it look more uneven, which it would be, so I used some of the dark rust and some of the light rust on there and I, I dabbed on some pretty thick um, bits of it and then used the brush to kind of even it out a bit. And once I get a flat coat on that, I think that'll look kind of cool. And um, you'll notice on the um, this side panel here, I did some rusting, especially around like the the openings here. And that's what makes it look realistic. When you have the little openings here, like the little circles, that's some kind of an engine exhaust or engine part or something. That's where you'd see something streaking out. So that looks kind of cool. I have some rust streaking out of that on there as well. So that's not too bad for my first attempt with these oils. Uh, I kind of like it. I think those are kind of neat. And, um, and they don't dry really fast, so you do have some time to go back and, and clean them up if you want. Um, and, and get them to be the way you want them to look. So, so I could also like dab this a bit. There we go. Take a little bit of the harshness off of it and make it look more like a natural streak. Okay. All right. So I like that. I think those are going to work out really well for doing the final weathering on the kit. Um, and that's pretty much all I'm going to do. I might do a little bit more for the dark streaks from the engines. I still have to get the other grills on. Um, I don't know if you could see it, but I did use a little bit of the black weathering powders because I don't want it to be really super dark, but it's, it's almost just like a hint of it. But I do need some more of that. So I'll probably use some of these, some of the Starship filth as well, and streak some of that down as well. Just... A little bit I want it to be subtle I don't want these all completely black because that's not what they are um, and then get that there as well so okay so I think that's pretty cool and then I can use more of the engine grease inside of these little mechanical panels and that thing to make that look really cool so all right great all right let me do some more work on that and then we'll go back and check on our uh, diorama base all right so we did a little bit more um, with the oils around the engines to give it that uh, that streaking look. Uh, I kind of like that. I have to maybe narrow it down a little bit more, but um, but I do like how it saturates all of the uh, the little machinery there. Uh, the powders really didn't get in there, as you can see over here. There's some definite delineation between the parts and the powders and. So that didn't give it the same look. Um, so that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna thin it down just a little bit more. And I use mainly the Starship filth. And I also wanna take some around the top of this one as well once I get that on there and go down as well. So, okay. So that looks like that's gonna work really well. I like the oils a lot. Um, and you can see a big difference between that section there and the section in between it. Look how clean that looks. Yeah, exactly. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Or even there, <laughs> that's a good example. Look how clean that looks. And that's gray, but it almost looks white by comparison when I look over here. So that's how the Millennium Falcon should look. Greasy, dirty, grimy. Um, I also put some of the um, the engine grease onto the, the parts there and some of the Starship filth. You can see how some of those are now darker or greasier. Uh, so that, that looks more like a cool machinery. So I, I like the I like the uh, the weathering powders. Those are kind of cool for certain things, the metallics especially, but uh, the oils definitely do a good job and they can they can double as both a wash and as a more direct griming uh, type of a material so obviously when I get back into some of the deeper machinery 
uh, like on the bottom of the ship especially, I'm going to want to um, really have that greased up. Yeah, so that's way too clean. So like that area, the other one on the other side. And I use some of the weathering powders. Those are kind of cool. But um, I'm going to want to use um, more of the oils for that. Those little mandible sections as well. Get those nice and grimy and dirty on there also. So, okay, cool. All right, so I definitely like those. Pull that back a bit. Kind of give you the whole effect. There we go. So, even though I have some blast marks and we have the different colored panels, uh, that certainly is quite a bit of a difference as you can see. I think that's pretty awesome. And the same with the greasy streaking back there. So I'll work on that some more. All right. All right, cool. So that's going to work out great. Let that dry a bit. And then um, we'll focus more on my uh, display base. All right, as I showed in the previous still, uh, I started to bevel the edge around this um, this initial base uh, after I let it glue over dry overnight. Um, and all I'm doing, and it's it's really easy, is I just use a serrated knife rather than an exacto knife. It's longer and it, it can do a sawing action. Um, I guess I could use like a pole saw because I have one of those, but this works just fine actually, and uh, and just kind of bevel it around and. And, and get a, a rough start to the edge um, because I want it to be like a smooth uh, gradation down to the to the um, to the base so almost looks sort of like an island I didn't want to get an island shape because it's not an island but I did want a little more detail around the edges rather than just the plain old boring square or rectangle so all right so now that I've gotten that uh, smooth uh, to a decent bevel and contour to the edge. I'm going to go ahead and use some some sandpaper and I just got some cheap dollar pack of sandpaper and uh, and I'll just sand around it. Once I get that edge done I'm going to start contouring some grooves in it as well um, and what I do as I showed in that picture just the easiest thing is just cut it let the let the uh, styrofoam go onto the carpet and then I just keep my vacuum handy and just vacuum it up a lot easier than trying to contain it uh, and then I put all the, the scraps into a little box I have here and, and uh, some of them I may reuse some are big enough that I can make little mounds of sand and that sort of thing with them on top of it so okay let's gonna get that sanded out and then we'll uh, I'll start working on some of the uh, contouring and the different sand uh, ridges all right All right, so I've started doing some of the contouring and, uh, and even building some additional pieces above the, the flat part there. Uh, I smoothed around the edges, as I said. I started putting in some, uh, some grooves to contour the sand somewhat. And I tried to keep some that are similar. Um, these particular ridges here, I want to get the idea of like the wind-blown ridges where you might have more than one ridge. And then it, um, it's going to lead up to a bigger sand ridge, as you can see here. And this is a, a separate piece, obviously, that I've sanded down. And I've used different sandpapers to get a really smooth finish because um, I've done other dioramas where I needed to have, like, the ground or rocks, which they want to be rough, but this is sand, so I want this to be as smooth as possible. So when I put on the sand material, it will mimic, like, a sand dune trying to do and I still want to shape that a little bit more to, to kind of give it that sand dune look where it sweeps up and then it's at a peak and then goes back down um, uh, right now I'm just kind of thinking out positioning because obviously I don't want to put big pieces where I'm gonna put a stand for example so I need to figure out where the the stand from the Falcon is going to come up 
Um, the TIE fighters are going to be behind it in this direction so they don't have to really necessarily uh, have a lot of room. Uh, the the AT-AT, I'm going to tentatively look in that particular area. Possibly I might move it over to there, we'll see. But I want to have the room for that to go. And that's kind of the, the way it's going to be, is you're going to have just two of the legs above the sand, half of this I'm going to gouge out the styrofoam and have it buried down inside. And even this uh, leg is going to be half buried. This one's going to be half buried. It's loose. Uh, this leg will be buried in the sand as well. That kind of thing. So that looks kind of good. I do want to have some more sand dune ridges above, behind it, along here. So I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to move it up just a little bit. But, um, I want to get some general positioning of that before I do any further contouring of this. Um, and, and it's coming along really well. Uh, shouldn't be too much more and I'll get this immediate base finished and then we'll be able to start putting some paint on it and some of the sand. So uh, once I get that done I'm going to put on a coat of um, some acrylic Red Dome Tan. I think that's about the right color for for the sand base. Uh, I just don't want any of the white styrofoam showing through. And then as I showed earlier in this video, I'm going to be using the um, model railroad materials to glue down some sand on top of that. So the acrylic paint won't melt the styrofoam as it would if I use like a spray on can. So I'll have to use an airbrush and uh, and get that onto there so I can get a base of that of that tan first and then go from there all right all right so here is a mold that you can buy in a hobby shop and it's designed to make rocks for model railroads um, and there's different sizes there's some very big ones some smaller ones I haven't decided yet which ones I want to use on this kit uh, I have used some smaller ones like this one and this little one up here on another diorama which I did a, a video of of a snow speeder so all right so uh, instead of plaster though I used resin and I'll do the same here I'll make some resin rocks um, possibly this one that one looks kind of cool I like that one there and maybe something like this we'll see but I'm gonna make a few of these and then um, position them around and see how they look and they'll be they'll be um, painted more like sandstone because I want to keep everything like the desert motif maybe some reddish or sand tan kind of rocks that sort of thing so okay so that's coming along well um, but let me go ahead and get this um, going on that and then uh, once I get that settled I'll be ready to work on some more of the parts and, and we'll get some painting going here soon all right thank you All right, so I've made some more progress on my uh, Jakku base. Uh, I have this uh, sand dune glued down to the base. And then around it, uh, I use some material called Smooth Finish I got at Hobby Lobby. And it's pretty cool, actually. It's made to work with, um, with uh, styrofoam and materials like that. It's fast drying. It doesn't shrink. And it's, uh, it's a very light, fluffy kind of a paste. And so, um, as you can see, I smoothed it around the edges and, and I'll let that dry a bit. Uh, I've also smoothed out some of these ridges a little bit with it as well. And I'll play with that a little bit on the kit. Um, I also used a uh, model railroad rock mold and I used some resin and I made several rocks out of it, as you can see here. It's kind of cool. It has a really realistic rock view of it. And once I uh, glue these down onto the styrofoam in different positions, I can weather them and paint them <clears throat> to match in with the with the sand base. Um, I also did uh, a little more of the positioning of the AT, -AT Walker, and so uh, I had the head tilted a bit, and I cut out some of the styrofoam to accommodate it. I have the other foot that's sitting over here uh, down inside of the 
styrofoam and I made some damage on it as you can see cut this up a bit I put a couple of blast holes in it use the Dremel to cut that up a bit as well so uh, and likewise I have a part of the styrofoam cut out to accommodate it like I did for the front one here okay so I like that positioning I think that's going to be the final positioning of the at at in its damaged state so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get a paint coat on the, the AT-AT. I'm thinking about starting with some whole red that looks kind of rusted and then put some of the gray over it. <clears throat> and then from there, uh, weather it that way, rather than a black base, the intricate detail will have like a rusted red color in there as well. Um, and these aren't the final positionings of the rocks. I'm just sort of laying them out right now. Um, once I get some more of the sand dunes up around the edges then I'll get some final placements of that but that's coming along really good so um, that'll pretty much wrap up this video for this week and then I'll go ahead and keep working on this base and the next thing will be to start getting some uh, some of the painting on it as I finish up the sand dunes okay great all right I will see everybody next week and thank you to all my subscribers uh, I just hit 90 and that's excellent so thank you everyone and I'll see you next week all right so as I said I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video for this week um, but I do want to leave you with a bit of a teaser uh, I do have some more footage already prepared for the next video uh, of the ad at and um, and the painting that I've begun on it so I'm gonna leave you with a few teaser shots of the um, the whole red on the ad at and it looks really awesome so okay i will see everybody next week